Today on Locked on Rockies, a historically bad start continues, but hey, at least Dick Monfort says he hates losing. You are Locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the second day of April in the year 2024 here on the Locked on Rockies podcast. I got our yesterday's uh, overlay up, so I'm going to change that while I continue to give you the intro here. We are the Locked on Rockies podcast. You can find us free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. You can find us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can let me know what's on your mind. You can fire off. Your Rockies hot takes like lots of you have. Uh, There are lots of people uh, who are commenting, firing off on the state of the Colorado Rockies here as they uh, have started the season off historically bad here. uh, Here's here's a question from Travis Rogers. Serious question. Just curious. How bad does KB have to be for how long before we make him the most expensive bench player in the league? So young guys can get at bats or just outright cut them and let them try to try somewhere else or just retire. At some point, we have to realize we probably won't be doing much. He uh, we probably won't be doing much during his tenure here. And yeah, it sucks. We wasted all that money, but it will be better for the Rockies of 2026 to 2031 seasons to just bite the bullet and move on. Going to have to agree with Tracy here. Uh, No way that happens. Uh, The Rockies infinite loyalty and uh, their love of Chris Bryant uh, will not ever allow that Chris Bryant will continue to play it doesn't matter how much he struggles it doesn't matter how long he goes over it doesn't matter how long he goes with multiple strikeouts uh, let's just dive in you know what uh thank you so much for for your comment uh there Travis uh shout outs to our everydayers shout outs to all of y'all uh remember find us on your favorite streaming services find us on the locked on Rockies YouTube channel be part of the show it is so frustrating right now unbelievably frustrating right now for the Rockies. Patrick Lyons tweets, Rockies lose five to nothing to the Cubs. They are one and four tied for worst start with five other years. Run differential of minus 23. Their worst since 1980. It's the 12th instance of negative 23 or more. They've led for all of five innings, tied score in seven frames and trailed in 33. disappointment doesn't even begin to start how I feel at the start of the season. And I understand it's five games. I understand that it's five games. I understand it's the beginning of the season. And I understand that it's young guys. But the Rockies have a chance to be above 500 right now. Splitting the series with the Diamondbacks. And although they were dominated and in, 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 in struck out nine times in that game, they wasted a quality start on the road. The Rockies have to start capitalizing on opportunities that they create for themselves. Yesterday's game was an abomination and no excuse. And it starts with Nolan Jones. We'll we'll dive into Chris Bryant here in, in a second, but Nolan Jones is a young guy. Nolan Jones has time to figure it out. Nolan Jones had a lot of pressure, a lot of instance, and a lot of stuff put on him that I think is certainly a factor going into this year. But we talked all off season long. We talked everything leading up to this. It's how do the Rockies respond? And the Rockies have responded by playing terrible defense, by uh, play uh, by striking out nearly double digits in every single game, not drawing walks, and wasting quality starts. This team has to prove to us that they can make an adjustment. This team has to adapt, has to change, has to shift, has to do something, has to mix up their philosophy, has to mix up their approach at the plate. They have to do something. But instead, as it feels so often as a Rockies fan, it doesn't feel like that that's there. It doesn't feel like this team is anything that we haven't seen before. This team is getting dominated. A nine strikeout shutout when you're fifth in the uh, in the rotation pitcher, the pitcher with arguably some of the biggest question marks of this season, are throwing you a shutout up until up, up until the, the things fall apart. Dakota Hudson gets you over five innings of shutout baseball, and you throw it all away. You can't even manage a single. You, 
the Rockies were blown away in that game. And I know the wind. I know there were good swings. I That's fine. That's great. Here, here Here's another Rockies consolation prize for us. Ah, they got unlucky. They were hitting it in the wind. I have not seen a Rockies team that has started this season with life, with pulse, with energy. Look at the Diamondbacks. That team knows that every game matters. Every second matters. The Rockies do not have time this year. Do not have the schedule to go on losing four of five. We talked about this. The worst thing the Rockies can do this year are go through these exact type of stretches. So once again, we are sitting here in a situation with a similar roster that we saw the last, the end of last year, and similar and 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 and, and similar mindsets, beliefs, philosophies from the front office and the organization that oh, now they're going to improve. They're going to just get better. They're going to turn it around. The clubhouse needs life. The team needs energy. They are defeated faces game five into the season. The problems with the Rockies continue to just highlight and emphasize the issues at the top. And we're going to dive into those that Dick Mumford interview in segment number two. But the Rockies have to show that they can make an adjustment. It starts with Kyle Freeland, right? There's no more prime opportunity than if they play, uh, than this game with the Rockies here against the Cubs. The Rockies need uh, Kyle Freeland to turn around. The Rockies need the offense to go and, and go after a Cubs team that, again, I am not buying fully into. They have strong players. They have good batters. They have good pieces. But I'm not buying fully into the NL Central. They aren't these, these NL West teams. These are teams you have an opportunity to do so. The Rockies still in the game for much of that game until they throw it all away. And there's no response. There's no rebound. It's boom, mistake made by the Rockies. You, you might as well put a fork in them because they're done. This Rockies team since last year has not proven that they've been able to overcome the, 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 the difficulties, overcome uh, uh, being down behind the Rockies for the first time in yesterday's game, get out of the first inning unscathed this inning. So what, I mean, it, it's just at this point, the analysis, especially from the team is just going to be, well, it's early. Ah, we believe in our guys. We'll stick with them. Tough stretch. Ah, we can't strike out. Unacceptable. It's unacceptable to strike out at the rate than we are. So what are you doing differently? What approach, what teaching, what coaching, what plan, what philosophy was implemented to the Rockies this offseason for them to strike out less? And I know the umpiring has been a little suspect. It's something that I haven't dwelled on too much, but the umpires are certainly in re early regular season form. I guess for them, that's normal regular season form. But I'm tired of excuses. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. Show us. Bounce back. Change the narrative. Do the things that we've been begging. If if it's and this and this goes up. If you believe so much in this team, Dicky, old tricky Dick, why hasn't anything changed? Why have you lost for the majority of your 30 years? It's because of the stuff that you say. It's because of your mindset. It's because of your philosophy. Your stubbornness gets trickled down throughout the entire organization. So now it just feels like we're just going to keep running our heads into a wall and hope it works. Because guess what? It worked in 2007. It worked in two years back-to-back -back in 17 and 18. Oh, those other teams. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to be there. We're a good team. I believe in us. We can play 500 baseball. Let me just hit you with all my isms. The number one thing this team can do the rest of this week is show us something. Show us something. Show us something. Other teams are coming out the gate screaming. Other teams are, are have these players showing up. Other teams are ready to go. The Colorado Rockies are not. Chris Bryant has been an embarrassment to start this year. Nolan Jones, if he has the yips, that's a massive problem for the Rockies. Yips, interesting one, depending on how you believe. But I believe that these young guys can turn things around. But the Rockies are playing sloppy, ugly, not good baseball right now. And they are killing themselves because of it. There is a universe where this Rockies team's three and two. Three and two. 
I firmly believe the Rockies had a shot in that game, even though they struck out nine times and had three hits in the game. Because when it's 0-0 zero, zero going into late, all you need to do is break it open late. But when you're letting balls go through your through your glove and you're throwing it all over the yard, you're striking out on three pitches, you're not taking walks, you're not going deep into count with the batters. There's only two guys that are really doing that. Really one guy. It's Charlie Blackman. Everyone with all those questions about Charlie Blackman, what's he going to do? What type of role is he going to? I mean, he easily shows you how the benefit of having a professional really, really good hitter in the lineup. He's the only guy up there that looks like he's really taking full, complete at bats. Ryan McMahon, I would say, gets to go up into that category as well. He's had a solid start to the season, and I like some of the stuff that I've seen from Brenton Doyle and Montero. That's not enough. The Rockies are behind, again, five games into the season, and it's, and it's not just barely losing. A reminder, Patrick Lyons tweets, the Rockies are four or one and four tied with the worst start with five other seasons run differential of minus 23 their worst since 1980 it's the 12th instance of negative 23 or more they've led for all of five innings tied score in seven frames trailed in 33 that is failure that is league worst. So if so, if you want to sit there and make hosts like me look even more foolish than I have for the past week, just about, by talking about the hope, the potential, and the ability of the Rockies, it has to change right now. There is no time. The schedule does not get easier. You play Arizona again. You play a pissed off Tampa Bay team to start your home series. There is no break to start the season. And if you want to show that you are legit, if you want to show that this team has what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best, even if it ends up in losses, then show that. Not one of, it's tying for the worst start in franchise history. Not setting a run different, a negative run differential that hasn't been achieved since the 80s. If you want to stop being looked at as an embarrassment, things have to change. But guess what? They aren't going to change because Dick Momfort has learned nothing, nothing. And I want to talk about his interview with Troy Rennick of the Denver Post coming up here in segment number two of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you uh, Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, not to mention news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV, you should. Check out Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. First segment, I mean, a little parched there. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show, firing off your Rockies hot takes. Let me know what's on your mind as a Rockies fan. And uh, so I finally had the chance to sit down and read the uh, Dick Momford interview with the Denver Post with Troy Rennick. And uh, I wanted to read some of the stuff that stuck out for me again please 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 go read the full thing on the denver post go support the denver post go read all the quotes go read troy's breakdown as well i loved in this interview troy in his piece dick says something troy little little fact you know little fact check little reminder a little bit of uh to, to bring up the situation with the rockies I, I thought this was a great great piece and a great way to set the stage for the rockies here where Hey, let Dick speak. Let Dick tell you what's on his mind. But Troy did a good job of, of putting up the context and putting in things that uh, are reflective of uh, the current state of the Rockies here. So I want to start 
do I start with the most egregious thing he said? Do I, do I want to start there? No. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, I'm going to start with eh, maybe this thing isn't the thing. that, that there, there are basically two main focuses here. And I, and I want to bring this. This is uh, the quotes from Montford here. Bringing in someone from the outside, that's in parentheses, so a little paraphrase, is the other side of it. And I'm not saying it's totally wrong. But when former GM Jeff left, there were a lot of people from the outside who interview or had interest. They would tell me how to win at altitude and everything they mentioned. It would not have worked or it's all things we have tried. I think in any business, you have to have people you can trust. And I trust both of them. With Schmidt, it's his third year. I think he has a good handle on it. I think he has a lot of talent to work with people coming with coming up. Take the combination of smart baseball people who work hard, who are trustworthy, loyal, and all want to win in Colorado. That's a dang, a damn good com uh, combination. Uh, Troy's little uh, counter argument here. The counter argument, of course, is that it's not working, even if the minor league talent is starting to show promise. And then uh, follow up question there uh, with Monford after that uh, that we'll uh, continue to talk about. I despise every single last thing that he just said right there. This this is the arrogance of Dick Momfort on full display. You know, we had an opportunity in a, in a rebuild to go outside of the organization to bring in someone new. But instead, I believe in my 30 years of mediocre to bad to awful with a couple of exceptions of great baseball that I got it right. That the people in this building, the my hand-picked crew, the people that are loyal to me, Dick Momford, these are the right minds. We're starting franchise history, Dick. You have followed up to sit there, and I know this was before the game, so, so let me, let, before I go too crazy, this interview was done before the, 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 the game started. So, just want to want to put that disclaimer out there. To follow up. The worst season in franchise history with a tie for one of the worst starts in franchise history, setting a run differential record that hasn't been set since the 80s and a team that continues to strike out at a near 10 strikeout a game clip. Your organization is flawed from the inside out. The people in your building, the people on your team are not helping you win he says he hates losing he says he hates losing in that then why aren't you embracing anything different why would you sit there and go through interviews and have people that come in with different ideas different philosophies cross your arms and immediately say nope not gonna work nope we've already tried that bs what have you tried bringing position players to play first base never spending big in free agency outside of the one guy that you've been bloodthirsty craving for your life even though <laughs> ooh, bad one there even though you drafted and developed one of the best third basemen ever play dick momfort doesn't make sense he's still trapped in his own bubble of ignorance he sits up in there and he's like man here we go this team can compete with the Dodgers. This team can compete with the Diamondbacks. This team can compete with the Cubs. Guess what? They can't. There are young and exciting and good players and reasons to believe in this team. But for Dick Momford to sit there and say in an opportunity where he could have learned more about his organization, learned something differently, brought in outside perspective, and he just said, nah, immediately shuts down all of that. To go with a guy that's been within his organization for years? You're not doing anything different, Dick. You don't care about winning that much if you're this stubborn. Until you change, Dick Momfort. You change, Dick Momfort. This team isn't going to see the changes that fans want. We don't want to he continue to go through seasons and hear the interviews from the owner of the team like this. Golly, man. They would tell me how to win at altitude and everything you mentioned. It would not have worked. So he already made up his mind. Nope, not going to do that. Because <laughs> I bet you they told him to spend money. I bet you they told him to get rid of some of his key veteran players. I bet you he want, they told him, you have to admit you were wrong. You have to admit that this approach was flawed. And he ain't going to do that. He's not going to do that. 
Because he's already decided, well, Dick Mumford knows what doesn't work. He knows that's not going to work. You don't get it. See, oh, you want to bring in a new philosophy to Colorado? Nope, I already know it's not going to work. Nope. Nah, not interested. Don't need to hear it. Nope. That's what I imagine he did. Heard an idea. Hey, at this, I'm going to come in and I'm going to trade Ryan McMahon. Hey, I'm going to get rid of Antonio Sensatella. Not going to work. Not going to work. Hey, I'm going to really bring in some fireball guys. I really want to has, have us spend money on, on, on some starting arms that can get strikeouts, not, not pitch to contact philosophy. That's Dick Momford. That's how I imagine the interviews for the new GM went. At least that's, that's, that's what he's, he knows. He knows. Dick Momford knows winning, baby. He knows what doesn't work. Or stuff you've already tried. What have you tried? Signing Ian Desmond and Daniel Murphy to play first base during your competitive window instead of building up and going after free agents that could actually contribute to your team? Moving pieces, at, have you tried more often moving pieces at the deadline? You haven't tried anything new. You put up a higher fence in right center field. If you truly tried, you wouldn't have let your GM trade away one of your great your franchise's greatest players. Golly, man. And this is only quote one. It's all about trust with Dick. It's all about trust. All about loyalty. Golly. Going back to the, the piece here. And this I'm going to start with uh, some of Troy's writing. By organic, Momford is... Uh, uh, let's see. There, there's a quote talking about organic process. By organic, Momford is referring to the club's draft and development philosophy. The Rockies' projected opening day payroll is 143.3 million per sport track. They have consistently paid their own players through the years, but rarely dip their toes in the free agent water, including this off season, where their top so start signings were back end starting pitcher Dakota Hudson and backup catcher Jacob Stalling. The philosophy leaves them dependent on selecting the right players in the amateur draft and maximizing the slight advantages smaller market teams have available in international pool money i think it's the only way we can do it and we are not alone there's 20 teams that are that are trying that are not trying to participate in getting a free agent in every spot spot part of it is luck and health when guys come along when relying on draft and development mumford said with the international bonus pools everybody was sort of equal and the smaller teams had more of a shot it's been a fair system we've done a good job and have more coming with amador and outfielder for young fernandez and then I like Troy's follow-up on that. To take advantage of living in the margin, shouldn't the Rockies invest more in analytics? They have 11 people in their department, three shy of the major league average. And that it does, I mean, remember, and talk about all the turnover. God, I just, that is just so unbelievably not true. The Rockies don't deal with remotely close to anything that the small market teams, you can sit there and say, it's reported that the Rockies lost $32 million from the shutout of uh, the regional sports. 32. That's tough. But uh, let's see again here. Just give me a quick Google. Uh, let's see. P -p -p Attendance rankings. Here we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Historically bad season for the Colorado Rockies. And um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, where, uh, oh, sorry. That was 2024. I was like, that's interesting. I don't see them. Okay. Bad year for the Rockies 14th in attendance. That means the Rockies had more attendance last year than the world series champions uh, champions, Texas Rangers. They also had uh, more attendance than the Milwaukee Brewers, the San Francisco giants, the Cincinnati Reds, Minnesota, Arizona, Baltimore, Cleveland, Washington, Chicago, White Sox, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, Kansas city, Miami, and Oakland. So you're only putting your, there are, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight playoff teams below you there, Dick. And you just bear, and you just missed out. You had a shot at the top 10. Seattle, uh, you, you know, maybe, maybe you're only about a thousand less per uh, people per game than, than Seattle. You're not small market, Dick. You aren't. Colorado just wants, they keep sitting there and be like, well, we're a small market. We're a small market. No, you're the one that believes you're a small market team. You're the only one. Because guess what? The Nuggets went out there and bought in and built around their championship. The, the Avalanche have been a team that's been 
now seven straight trips to the playoffs with three cups underneath their belt. And the Broncos, you can say whatever, but they still have had more success. They don't, none of those other teams sit there and go, nah, small market, small market, small market. You're not a small market team, Dick. You aren't. Denver is not a small market. The region, the area, the geographic coverage that the Rockies could get in the United States is massive. So to sit there and say, this is our only option. BS, you just paid Chris Bryant $180 million. It's selective. It's the philosophy. And the problems start at the absolute top. Ah, man, my blood boiled reading that interview with Dick Monfort. It literally just looks like he sits up there and covers his eyes and then says something, and then that's it. If this team wants to change, if this team wants to, to, to get better, it starts with Dick Monfort being better. It starts with a different philosophy. It starts with less excuses. Small market. Other teams are spending money. Ah, ah. A team outspent you, and they're less than you in the, in, in the, sta- in the uh, attendance from last year, and they just cleaned your freaking clock. Dick Mumford sitting here crying while the rest of the league is laughing at him. Ah, oh, gosh, I, I, I couldn't believe the rest of that. I, I really, uh, reading that interview really ticked me off. Please go read Troy's work. Thank you, Troy, for getting an opportunity to speak with Dick. Thank you for, for asking good questions and then providing context in your follow-up in the piece because it's important. Golly. If you're loyal to Dick Mumford, buddy, you got a job in the Rockies organization. You are set. All right, quick break. I know I went way over there, so I got to talk about Dakota Hudson. Got to talk about some of the good stuff from yesterday as well. We'll do that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Rockies. But before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes FanDuel. FanDuel's got you covered for all the sports action. I mean, it is a crazy time in the sports calendar right now. It is uh, basketball. We got hockey. We got baseball in full swing, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tourney, Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. Because if it's a $5 winning money or $5 winning bet, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets. Hey, bet on the Rockies. Why not? Maybe bet on the Nuggets or the Abs. You can see all the action on FanDuel.com slash locked on or the FanDuel app. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Locked on Rockies podcast here, free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. Trying to calm myself down there after, uh, man, a lot of frustrations just boiled over here (laughs) in that last segment. Hey, uh, but you know what? Let's give props to where props are due. A question, a a picture that had one of the biggest question marks of the, uh, of the season, Dakota Hudson there. He gets, uh, goes five and a third, four hits, two walks, two strikeouts. And, uh, Really should have gone I mean, closer to six. I mean, if that error doesn't happen, there's there's some potential there. I, you know, great. I, I'm really encouraged by the performance there. Really encouraged by, uh, you know, that type of start. First pitcher to get through the first inning unscathed. Was able to, you know, keep the, the Cubs off balance and, and get out of some jams yesterday as well. He, he faced traffic. He faced opportunity, but he was able to uh, to, to slow it down and uh, get the job done there. And uh, Peter Lambert comes out of uh, out, and unfortunately, he gives up, a, uh, I think, what was it, it two runs? There was it a home run. I can't remember what it was. But, again, in a situation coming in there where things were getting a little a little dicey, but, it's, I mean, I, you know, so, so I, I, I'm encouraged by that. I, I I don't know. Nick Mears came in just for a second, but probably just so Peter Lambert could, could finish out the ride there. But. When your pitcher on the road gives you an opportunity like that, your offense needs to back it up. Nolan Jones, Chris Bryan, Elias Diaz, Montero, Doyle, all hitless yesterday. Only three hits there. And, and again, this is a team that struck out nine times. There, there's, there's so much ground that needs to be made up. There's so much the Rockies need to do to get back on track. And again, I, I don't sit here and, and, and look at a cup. This is a, it's a good Cubs team. Of course. I mean, they're, they're a team that, that 
has the potential to 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 do some damage. But I, I'm not sitting here thinking they're they're as dominant as they are. But it's again, how do the Rockies respond? It is now losing four of five games. That is, it is nearly a week's worth of baseball. That we are almost through a first, the first week of the season. We are two games away from that happening. And what adjustments are, uh, can the Rockies make? Will they make? Because we're just seeing the same Rocky storylines playing out right now. But hey, shout outs to Dakota Hudson there. Really good start. And it's a bummer when your offense doesn't back you up whatsoever. Folks, uh, we are going to wrap things up here for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. I know that last segment was a little short, but I gave you a little extra fire there in the middle. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. What are your thoughts on the Rockies start? What's on your mind here as the Rockies uh, have stumbled out of the gate here to start the 2024 campaign? You can let me know on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. You can let me know uh, there on X. Let me know at LO Rockies there. Uh, you can follow us there as well. Uh, but, folks, thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Make sure you make Locked On MLB your second listen of the day. And Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and Locked On Buffs got you covered for more Colorado sports coverage here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.